For safety reasons, all claimants must hire a hour harker to escort them on the mountains. The hour harkers all agree on the importance of this. Okay, is this... I mean, I don't see any skill checks listed here. But it says it'll cost 100 sovereigns to stake a claim if you find one. This is probably just the first step, and then after this, then we gotta do some, like, skill check stuff, I'm guessing. Stay close, friend, warns your hour harker. He grins. Or not. You've paid already. <laughs> he lights a vapor lamp, glowing purple like the gases of the nearby nebula. It occasionally sparks with little flecks of green. Soon enough, the lamp is the only light as you move out to the treacherous, mostly unclaimed edges of the mountain. Occasionally, he stops to sniff, or to drag a foot through the snow and mud, in what looks like a line. Finally, he seems satisfied. He shoots you a mostly toothless grin as he lights a cigarette. Reckon this has your name all over it. What you think? The mud is hard here, covered with soft snow. A few young trees flourish in the inhospitable conditions, but not many. Only one other mining group seems to have staked a claim here. The hour harker warns that it would be most impolite to ask about their success. Your lustrum, the quality of a claim, gives you a 60% chance of success. Wait, a 60% a sixty chance of success to claim? Attempt to claim? How, how could I fail to claim? Hmm. Anyway, based on the descriptions we've heard about what to look for, this actually surprisingly sounds really good. The mud is hard, which means that it's frozen because it's very cold and frozen around the geodes, right? It has a few young trees, which is exactly what I'm supposed to look out for, right? They're supposed to be young and not too many trees. Uh, that's perfect. All right. Like, I don't even really care to make my fortunes here. I'm not like a fool like the other prospectors. I'm just doing this because I'm curious. Success. There are no complications. You accept the hour harker's recommendation and plant your flag. You do not actually own this part of the mountain. You merely have the right to exploit it. It's time to get started. Wow, we can actually like do this. Assign crew to work in the claim. It's marked off by frayed ropes wrapped around ten pegs. Your claim was expensive, but any hours below the surface are yours. Of course, your crew will handle the actual mining work. Of course, remember, Elizabeth doesn't like to get their hands dirty. So assign one crew member or five. Uh, you will get your crew back later, assuming you have space aboard and there are no accidents on site. The more crew you assign, the faster new hours will be ready for collection. Well, I've got ten crew. Let's assign five. They were hired to work for you. Nobody said anything about it being exclusively working on your locomotive. Sure. Uh, you should probably return to get them at some point. Yes. I probably should. <laughs> Yeah, I'll sign five. You're a little short-handed. When you have fewer crew than your locomotive's minimum safe manning, things will begin to go wrong. Oh. Oh, I forgot about minimum safe manning. What is the minimum safe manning? Where does it, where does it say? Yeah, I can't seem to find the minimum safe manning for the Orphean. You think, like, maybe mousing over this would show up, but it doesn't. Huh. Well, I don't feel like five would be under the minimum safe manning. That seems pretty reasonable. I mean, there's another ship, like the... the was it 2,500? 1,500? Yeah, I think it was 1,500, the one that I was looking at possibly getting. Didn't that one have only five crew as the max? Of course, the minimum safe manning depends on the ship, but still. We're probably fine. Also, the game has gotten extraordinarily laggy for some reason. Like, even the interface is, like, 10 FPS and it's super delayed when you click on stuff. Probably would be a good idea to restart the game, but with me not being too comfortable about when it saves, because I have no idea, I don't really want to do that. Don't forget about us, Captain. Your chosen crew disembarks, both volunteers and volunteered. They should quickly get the hang of things. So 
so how does how does this work? There's a lot to do. Um, get, oh, can you just keep assigning people? Can you get more crew and just assign five more, or assign five more? Hmm. And I could just retrieve. Better pull them back before they drink what should be your profits. Nah, it's fine. Order your crew to begin mining. There's hours in this mountain, and if you can get them out, they'll make you rich. Once you do this, you'll not be able to recall your crew until after collecting your next shipment of hours. Yeah, uh, get to work. The quartermaster hands out pickaxes and food rations. The crew begins digging. Since you don't have access to furnaces large or powerful enough to get the most out of the mountain's larger geodes, they'll focus on filling barrels with unseasoned hours. You can sell these at other ports. It'll be some time before they've dug out enough. You should return later. Uh, it says return to Lustrum in a month to pick up those of your crew you assigned to mining. A month. Okay, that's a while. I mean, time passes pretty fast, but it's going to be like at least a couple episodes till I pick them up again. And just for note later, although I will forget this, I drop them off on the 15th of September. Dear God, it's so laggy. What? What is it? What is it doing? Wow. Um, hmm. I'm going to try to restart the game. Restarted the game, performance is good again, and it looks like it did save my progress, because my five crew are still out and they are mining. And apparently we can observe my crew in action. Backbreaking labor, frozen drops of sweat on every forehead. Between gasps, a few lines of an unfamiliar working song. Working dawn till dusk, our pickaxes are blunt. For not a penny more, because our captain is a... Hmm, <laughs> blunt. Blunt, they were gonna rhyme with blunt. Probably, you know, C-U-N-T? So, tea shop done. Pub done. Visit the Windward Company. Oh, and to attempt to climb the mountain in search for the singing caves requires two supplies. Well, I could buy that very easily. Let's visit the Windward Company. That should be interesting. Turned away at the door. Yeah, that's what I expected. The Windward Company was not the first to begin harvesting the mountain, but no other came in harder or faster once the hours were detected. The company began by bribing prospectors to sign over successful claims and even offering to help process lucky prospectors' hours in their huge factory ovens. But netty men are cheap, and big sticks even cheaper. As the claims began running out, things changed quickly. Now the whole facility is out of bounds. The guard is uninterested in any business you might have. No, she does not know who you are or care who you may be friends with. This branch is a closed facility. Certainly it's closed to you. So we've already explored Lustrum, right? Oh yeah, that, that is exploring Lustrum, what we just did. We've already been to the tea house, but we have not been to Sweet Jane's Counting House. A little accountancy firm snuggled in the snowy drifts. Sweet Jane oversees everything herself. The transference of funds, the balancing of probabilities, the transport of commodities, the termination of contracts. She's huddled behind her desk, swaddled in a monstrously ugly red scarf. While she fiddles with her abacus with one gloved hand, she heats the other over a little coal fire. Her one good eye focuses on you. She smiles. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but my cat Chain's being just meowed. I think she's I think she's getting frisky and about to start playing. Um let's listen to Sweet Jane's offer. She surveys you alarmingly. And why does this, unlocked when you do not have Sweet Jane's request, why does it have the picture of a knife? Just how sweet is Sweet Jane? She limps to the window. Snow batters the window pane. The shadow of the mountain is all but lost in the blizzard. The lantern light means the offices of the Windward Company are just about visible. I was raised by the company. Children are faster workers, you understand. Her fingers drum on the windowsill. Such a waste. Where they see men, they see labor. Where they see time, they see chains with which to bind us. But where they see death in the skies, 
I see victory. She turns to you and smiles. Bring me nameplates, torn from London's ships. I will see you adequately compensated. Oh, yes! Oh, remember it was, wasn't it somebody at uh, Port Prosper who wanted me to give them nameplates from Tacketys, which I turned down, of course, because I'm with the Tacketys? I was wondering when we'd find the equivalent. We just have. Oh, how interesting. So... It mentions them limping to the window and they only have one eye. Given that and what they said, raised by the company and children are being used for work. They were used for work as a child. It sounds like they had a bunch of, you know, workplace injuries since the Windward Company, I'm sure, does not give a shit about worker safety in the slightest. Just get as many replaceable workers as you can in there and who cares if they die, just get another one, right? I would be more than happy to help Sweet Jane. You will hunt London locomotives and bring their nameplates to Sweet Jane. She reaches out and touches your hand just for a moment. Hers is ice cold. Thank you. You agreed to Sweet Jane's murderous request. You've been tasked with hunting down London dreadnoughts for Sweet Jane. Okay. Is there anything else to do? I'm, nothing to do with my claim. Just gotta wait a month. Been to Sweet Jane's. I've explored entirely. Oh, I should buy some supplies and attempt to climb the mountain in search of the singing caves. I haven't even looked at the stores at all, actually. Oh, Sweet Jane's trading post. They sell unseasoned hours, that makes sense. And supplies and fuel. Buy some more supplies. A bustling family-run concern that supplies sky fares and trades in hours bought from local prospectors. Any deals going on? Oh, there's a pending prospect. Oh, oh, right, that's the prospect I have. I was like, thinking I needed to accept it. And they have deals on hours. Uh, we can't sell hours here, can we? No, they would not buy them. Good, that would be a absurd exploit. Well, I'll leave this for now and see how much we have left over when I'm totally done with this place as far as storage space. Now that I have more supplies, let's attempt to climb the mountain in search of the singing caves. No path leads up to the peak, but with a sturdy stick and a stubborn attitude, you may be able to forge one. Oh, 16% chance of success. That's real bad. An almost impossible climb. The snow is deeper than expected, and the cliffs in your way both taller and more treacherous than you can handle. You reach for a rocky handhold. It crumbles under your hand. Luckily, a snowdrift not too far below catches your fall. Lying winded in the snow, you give up. The mountain is victorious for today. You retrace your already fading footprints to Lustrum, where the fireplaces are always burning. So the cost of failing is terror and supplies. Now that we found a new port, my terror's not too bad. 35%. But since it costs two supplies, that is... 80 sovereigns per try. Hmm. I'll, I'll try a couple more times. Again. Uh, same description. Yeah. Yeah, one more, one more try. Okay. Nope. But then again, singing caves. That sounds pretty fucking cool. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna try some more. Duh. Duh. Yes! The snow is deep and much of the mountain demands scaling cliff sides and clamoring a clambering across treacherous ledges. There's no way to tell how long the climb is. Eventually, you claw up onto a ledge near the peak and sit, exhausted. The air is too thin to keep going, even if you had any strength left. 
This is as close to the, as you can get to the peak. The air is thin, but the view is majestic. From here, the reach stretches out before you in endless waves of purple and violet, occasionally broken by a flicker of gold deep within the clouds. Far below, Lustrum is little but a small yellow glow on a blanket of winter. Let's explore the singing caves. The lightest breeze passing through causes a sound like a soft whistle. The cave's music is considered a good omen by those in the town below. Half an hour into your exploration, the wind picks up. The caves fill with the sound of distant fluting. There's no tune to it, just a pleasant, natural melody, like the echo of birdsong. Just as quickly, though, it turns sharp. Less birdsong, more bird prey to a ravenous cat. The atonal screech rocks the mountain, though by time it leaves the caves. Their unique uh, by the time it leaves the caves, their unique acoustics have turned it into something soft. Your feet crunch against something, a shard of glass, red tinted. Looking through one side, the world seems a burning inferno. From the other, all is well. Looking closer, part of a glyph remains on the shard. Extremely precise work, though its function is alien to you. Perhaps there's someone in Lustrum who would know more. Ooh, the person in the corner of the pub, right? Your ambiguous shard quality is now one. Okay, are we gonna die as we climb back down the mountain? It's a long way, even a small slip could be fatal. Are we fine? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Go to the figure in the corner. Talk to Mr. Pennies? No, that didn't do it. So who would I talk to then? If not them, then probably not Sweet Jane. Maybe the Tinkerer, Murgatroyd? Yes. Show Melisine the ambiguous shard. She's the only one in town who might have an idea about it. Is that what I think? Of course it is. Where did you find it? On the mountain? Melisine rushes to her workbench, rummaging for tools. You know what it is? The antithesis of light and law. Light is law, you know. But why would there be pieces of the science here? Maybe... Yes, I'll, I'll need a few things. Nothing too difficult for you to find, I'm sure. It's the antithesis of light and law. Okay. So what do you need? You need bronze wood, munitions, and a pane of stained glass. Where do I find that? I've never seen that for sale or anything. Hmm, that's going to be the tough one. Right, well, I think I'm done here for now, so what I'm going to do is buy as many barrels of unseasoned hours as I can, because it's a deal. And I'm going to head back to New Winchester, turn in port reports, all that good stuff, and then I'm going to bring back the nine munitions that they need here. <laughs> Look at this. The princess has taken all the blankets. Lustrum's cold. Throw something on the fire. Books, if you must. I'm not going to burn books. Jesus. Ooh, we got a couple things here. We got a homestead and also some loot north of it. Homestead appears to be thriving. Family gathers outside. Should we disguise story for supplies? Uh, no. We definitely need to reduce our tear. 61%. Because it looks like every time I go to Lustrum, to or from it, I'm going to have to go through the horror, which slowly increases your tear by 10% each time. <laughs> It stops at a limit of 10%, but if you, like, leave it, like I did, going to Lustrum, and then go back through it, it starts all over again. Let's eat our fill from 61 to 51. Thank you. Sticky porridge and viney vegetables. So I got something over here, too. Ah. Some old china. Ah, we got another wasted time, another cracked barrel. 
Yeah, so this is actually what I was talking about when I mentioned before that the time seems to sort of talk. Maybe it can think or something. Um, after it's been split and broken, the hour's insistent melancholy has begun to permeate the engine. Persistent melancholy? I mean, it doesn't specifically mention a voice, but... I don't know, something odd about it. Um... I'm going to throw out the whole barrel full. Let's protect my crew. I don't have that much crew left. It's not the date that it was. <laughs> Lost a barrel. The crew hurry the hours to an exterior hatch and pour them out. You watch as a month spills, glittering into the night. Back in New Winchester, turned in my port reports, went ahead and hired more crew and fully repaired my hull. Transferred all the munitions to my, to my ship. And then I only have three other slots with which to fill with fuel and supplies. So I'm going to take one extra fuel and two extra supplies. That's on top of the fact that I already have almost 100% full on each of these. So we should be perfectly fine. Given that I know exactly where Lustrum is, we should be okay. There is something I want to do too. There's a couple new prospects, including one for a place, a port that I've never heard of or been to. Apparently, Trader's Wood needs literature. The Somerset students camped in the dark wood require fresh material for their continued studies, entertainment, and occasionally roughage. They've requested five consignments of ministry-approved literature. It's to the south-southeast, so it should be... Well, that could be a lot of places, because <laughs> this is very unexplored down here. But it's like... Well, given that Port Avon is right there, it's probably a decent distance from that port. Because the ports are never that close to each other. So, it's probably, like, here. But I'll definitely take that one. And this is an interesting one. This is a prospect that actually aids the company. The Windward Company. Their war efforts. So this would be aiding them against the Tackities. This kind of speaks to the Windward Company's desperateness when you read this. The company has been unable to break the Tackety's hold on hours mining. To keep the refineries busy, they've recruited representatives to purchase hours from unaligned captains at implausible prices. Yeah, it's very interesting. Definitely not going to take that, obviously. Don't want to help the freaking company. Alright. Um, oh yeah, my terror's pretty good now too since we came back to London that's good because we're gonna have to go through the horror again on the way to Lustrum so let's head back there and deliver the munitions all right let's turn in the nine carefully packed crates of munitions oh and this is also gonna reward me an unlicensed chart this is gonna give me so much money my god 1200 sovereigns <laughs> Whew. And also barrel unseasoned hours and an unlicensed chart. Pleased, the head of the mining association throws in a barrel of freshly dug hours and a chart from her days in a Tackety scouting militia. Yeah, I think I just helped the Tackety's, right? Um, Tackety's dominant in the region tend to further their hold on the hours mining industry and demand better rates from the Windward Company refineries. Uh, prospectors are organizing. Okay, so they're using the weapons for... Hmm. Are these the mining weapons, or the um, munitions rather, are they using that to uh, bargain with the Windward Company, or the more intensive digging methods? Probably the more intensive digging methods. There are courses through the cosmos which the Ministry would prefer remain untraveled. Acquire these from the New Street Line or the Parsimonious Chairman. Or from this. So I'm still not entirely sure what that is, but it's listed under Villainy. I guess I could use that to get somewhere where I shouldn't be. Along with... I had another, like... It wasn't a chart, but it was like a stamped thing. Uh, this, Ministry Stamped Permit. So between the permit and the unlicensed chart, I could probably get to some areas I shouldn't be. Though I don't know what those areas would be. At this point, I feel like exploring... This whole area, north and south of Lustrum, is totally unexplored. Let's do it. I've got full crew, 
full hull. Uh, I just bought as many fuel and supplies as I can. Tear's not too bad. Not great, but it'll be okay. Yeah, let's do it. First thing I want to do is see what the heck is at the edge of the world. <laughs> what is this? Is this a hard stop? Let's go find out. This place is very creepy, by the way. It's very dark. I'm, I'm really scared about going beyond the edge. Like, am I just going to suddenly explode? Uh, definitely doesn't look like a hard limit. Uh, I'm scared. Okay, the map light, it like stops scrolling. Skies ahead are vacant and dead. What happens if you keep going? The Graveyard of Stars. Okay, I knew something would happen. I can turn back, so it's okay. Nothing has gone horribly wrong. A waste stretches before you. The star that reigned over it died cold eons ago. Now its domain is empty of life, drowned in darkness, harried by a howling wind. Your crew beg you to turn back. All that waits ahead is the slow shedding of all that you were, then a frozen death. Venture in or turn back, or propitiate the Waste Wife, if I had the Waste Wife's ire. I don't... <laughs> I think the Waste Wife is like a god. Let's read this. You've angered one of the spiteful gods of the sky. Perhaps here, on the edge of the places it has taken for its own, you can win its forgiveness. Oh, interesting. Okay, but the question is, what does propitiate mean? Propitiate? Propitiate. Uh, win or regain the favor of a god, spirit, or person by doing something that pleases them. The pa This is an example phrase. The pagans thought it was important to propitiate the gods with sacrifices. Synonyms are appease, placate, mollify, pacify. Okay. If I venture in, just a little way, just enough to say that you have, to be one of those rare, wild few, the crew will undoubtedly resist. You must convince them. 21% chance of success. One supply. Oh, you need three fuel. Ooh. Well, I mean, I'm not far from a place where I can get fuel, so that wouldn't really be a problem. That's terrifying, though. It's especially terrifying because, do you know how my playthrough ended when I played Sunless Seas? It ended doing exactly something like this. Going off to some place that I shouldn't, thinking, ah, uh, should I really go here? And I did, and then I died. And permanently died at the end of a 60 hour playthrough. So, the edge of the map is just where it's cold, where there's no light, right? Star that rained over it died cold eons ago. Empty of life, drowned in darkness, harried by a howling wind. I'm just thinking about the liberation of night, right? Elizabeth is interested in them, thinking maybe there's something to what they have to say, or at least they know something about what's been going on with the stars dying and whatnot. But the liberation of night, they want to, I guess, kill or remove or stop all the stars. It's called the liberation of night. I guess they want everything to be dark, but if everything's dark and it makes it like this, where everything's empty of life and drowned in darkness, I mean, what the hell would be left? You can't live in that kind of world, obviously. Anyway, yeah, I'm terrified. Um, if I fail this, I feel like some of my crew are gonna like jump off into the void and kill themselves or something, because they're they really, really, really don't want to go into the void. Well, this void. Maybe they prefer the other void behind us. Um. Venture in! Probably for the best. 
Despite your, uh, despite your exhortations, the crew will not obey. They've heard too many stories of engines dying in the wastes, of the killing fingers of encroaching ice, of crew and captains going mad in the dark. We'd follow you anywhere, comrade, but not there. That is very fair. Okay, just puts me back, and it didn't actually consume the fuel because we didn't go. Cool. Is this something I can mine? Ah. Oh wait, I don't have space. No, I do have space. It gave it to me instantly, which is why I thought I didn't have space, because I looked down there and it was full, but it gives it to you right away. As soon as you press the button. The crew see the snow on Lustrum, then... Oh. Yep, already seen that. Oh, hi. Sorry for the interruption, had a phone call. Back to the fight. Trying to get a, a blunderbuss shot in. Come on. God damn, I'm doing terrible. They're very hard to hit. Damn it. Wasted time. Ah, another broken one. Let's throw out the whole barrel full. Don't want to risk anything. It's okay. Ah, Jesus. 64% chance of success. Oh, that's for the bronze wood, right. Um, yeah. Failure. Your guns did their work too well, and the spinster has been reduced to smithereens. You managed to scavenge a bundle of arm-length, razor-edged splinters. Not enough for the train yards, but perhaps enough for replacement chair legs, or a handful of snuff boxes for well-to-do Londoners. 60 sovereigns. Okay, that's not terrible. I was expecting to lose crew or something from a failure. Hmm. I will keep exploring, but I am not going to engage in combat with anything difficult. That was 16 whole. Something over there. Oh, another thing to mine. What is that that just popped up? Cantagri cleave to rocks like these, they rarely appreciate visitors. Oh, that's a big one. That's that's a very different one from what I'm used to. Um, I wasn't going to engage in combat, but these, the other ones are much easier than most enemies. I don't know about this one. I will try it. 
Oh, fuck me. Nope. It's a bull cantankery. Nope, one more hit and I'm dead. Never mind, that hurts. Bye. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. If I can just get to the dock, then... Um, they will not attack me once I dock. They'll just leave. Holy shit. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm going back to New Winchester. Discontent. Because our terror is 60%. Uh, ah, another star has disappeared. Let's... Let's spend a supply to give the whole crew some brandy. Lower the terror by 5%. Back in New Winchester, all safe and sound. Repaired my hole. And I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I think the main thing I want to do is explore some more. There's a bunch of ports that I still haven't found. I still haven't been to... Uh, is it called New Magdalens, or just Magdalens? It's south-southwest, so somewhere around this huge dark region that I haven't touched at all. I want to go down there and try to find it. I still have a prospect since, I think, literally the beginning of the game where I need to deliver seeds. So I want to do that. And probably before that, I'll take a quick stop of the circus to finish up that uh, twin acrobat that I found at the Lustrum Mines. Probably stop at Port Avon on my way down here to Magdalene's to try to reduce my terror since it's at 61%. But yeah, main thing I'll do next episode is find new Magdalene's.